dish that you'll be making is tortière, the crème de la crème of meat-filled pies. I've made pies before, I've made meat before. In my mind, those two things do not go together. My sister and I make tortière every Christmas. I'm feeling so confident. The trick to making perfect tortière is twofold. First, the pastry must be delicate and flaky. Second, the rich meat filling must be perfectly cubed, cooked, and seasoned with an aromatic blend of herbs and spices. We want you to create your own irresistible version. To help you do that, we're giving you a specialty pantry filled with a bounty of extraordinary Canadian meats. Bison, wild boar, pork, elk, and red deer. I rip open the fridge and I see this bounty of game meat. My family and I love to hunt, so it reminds me a lot of home. I have never worked with game in my life. Tortier, it's pie related. I can make a pie crust just by feeling the dough, but it's the meat filling that's really bothering me. Tortier is a dish that was traditionally baked using the lesser cuts of meat. It would be the legs of game birds, the hind of game animals. It is one hefty meal. I'm keeping my pie super traditional. Cinnamon, cloves. Sabrina. Hey, Chef. What kinds of meats did you choose? Good old traditional pork and some bison. It makes me happy. It makes me feel like I'm home. <laughs> I know there's a lot at stake for you because you are missing a big event to be here. Yes, sir. Today's a hard cooking day. I'm missing my only sister's wedding. Is that weighing heavy on your mind? Yep. I have to nail this. I'm making this tortillar for her. Well, good luck. Thanks, Chef. Christopher, how's your feeling? Bison with some bacon in it. Haven't tasted it yet, we will do in a bit. Are you planning on using that potato, brother? I'm forgetting things. I'm really worried. Oh, it smells amazing up here. Key here is those spices. Cinnamon, clove, bay leaf. Make sure you remove that. Nothing worse than biting on a bay leaf. Easy to overspice a tortilla. You put in a pinch, you add a second pinch, those flavors build and build and build, and it's out of control. The pastry is an important part. This will be a bit of an interesting change because I usually do sweet things. You need to have the right thickness of pastry and try and keep it as crisp on the bottom as possible. If you roll that pastry dough too thick, it's going to be raw. There's no such a thing as a good looking raw pie. No, no, no. So, in the last few minutes, where they've got to decorate, egg wash their pies, and get them into the oven because it takes 30 minutes for those tortillas to cook. I don't know what Tammy's doing over there. I'm starting to lose track of time. I haven't actually assembled anything yet. 30 minutes! Your pie needs to be in the oven. If I don't get this tortilla in the oven, I could be going home. Keep watching my pie. I'm like a paranoid parrot. Very important when they're putting the pies in the oven, they're going in the bottom. And then you're going to have this basic little convection happening. That heat's going to wrap around the top, hit the top of the pie, and make that nice and golden brown. Four, three, two, one. Pie out! Hands up! Christopher, everything is riding on this tortillere, and I don't know how the filling is inside the pie. So this is a mix of bison meat and applewood smoked bacon. I flavored it with rosemary, sage, thyme, and bay leaf. The crust actually has a bit of cayenne pepper and black pepper in it. See that? It's very dense. It means the meat is packed nicely. All these little slits that you made, that released all of the air that got trapped inside. It looks delicious. Very moist, it's glistening inside. Taste that. Does that taste like a pastry chef made it or a savory chef made it? A uh, savory chef? That's right. Great control of the spice and salt. Nothing's overpowering, it's all working in harmony. So it looks great, and it tastes even better. Thanks, Chef. He's got mad skills. <laughs> Moist, flavorful, very nice. Serena, please bring up your tortilla. I'm giving up my sister's wedding to be here. Nothing is kicking me out today. Tell me what you put in your tortilla. Bison, pork butt, nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon,
It is lovely and moist, and the seasonings very subtle. Tastes delicious. Thank you. Great depth of flavor. The crust, perfectly baked. Crispy on the outside, in the center, nice and buttery, flaky. You choking up, what's going on? Just thinking of home. <laughs> well listen, you're missing your sister's wedding. But I think for a massive opportunity. A chef. Really great job. Please go back to your station. This is a tagine with a side of herb couscous. What the frig is a tagine? I've never seen one. I've never heard of it. If I live in Edmonton, if it doesn't moo and eat grass, I have no idea what this is. It's a North African dish named after the pot it's cooked in. Now, Moroccan cuisine is all about spice and texture. I know it's very humble when you look at it, but this is one of the most sophisticated dishes you can find. This tagine does not have meat. So your vegetables are the main event. They have to steal the show. Why is it so freaking hard? The first step would be choosing the vegetables that I want to put into my tagine, because that would then help me make the decision of which spice combinations would work best with the vegetables I've chosen. I know nothing about tagines, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use some peppers, some tomatoes. I'm probably going to use some pumpkin for a bit of earthiness. The tagine, it's kind of making me feel like the stew my mom used to make. It would feel like a warm, cozy hug. So I will make it an ode to my mom. I'm just going to give it my best and do what I got to do to stay. The amount of spices and vegetables are messing with my head. The more selection I have, the harder it is to pick. This is an opportunity for the home cooks to really show us who they are with the way that they combine all of those spices. By smell and taste and a little bit of luck with a pinch of this and that, I will hope it works out. I'm going to work on a harissa that I'm going to make myself. It's going to be tight making my own harissa, but it's a risk that I'm willing to take. I like what Aaron's got going on. He's definitely yeah. doing that harissa. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, that smells dope, man. Miranda. Hi, Chef Claudio. How are you doing? Uh, I'm pretty confident. I know my flavors um, in my tagine are good. I thought I had a good idea with my pumpkin seeds, so I'm happy. <laughs> are you cooking with instinct right now? Or experience? Uh, Instinct. Instinct. <laughs> so far in this kitchen, I cooked with a lot of things I've never done before, and this is no different, so I'm just trying to do my best. I wish you luck, but I don't think you're going to need it. Thank you, Chef Claudio. I don't eat rice or couscous. And the trick of couscous is, unlike rice, you have to pour the boiling hot water onto couscous, give it a stir, OK, and cover it. Aaron's doing it right, he's steaming it. Every couple of minutes you have to check on it, you have to fluff it up, because if you don't, it's gonna be one hard kick of couscous. I think it tastes fine. I have no bloody idea. I'll tell you that couscous is only about a couple of minutes, eh? Guys, down here. One minute, you have one minute left. Come on, guys, final push. Good job. Mother of God. Ten, nine, eight, seven. is kind of like cooking an egg. You have no idea what's gonna happen inside and you just hope for the best. So home cooks, the hot air trapped in your tagine vessels is still circulating. So to make sure that all your tagines stop cooking at exactly the same time, we're gonna release that steam. lifts up my tagine lid, and this incredible aroma comes my way. Wow, that smells really good. I'm getting a nice, earthy cinnamon aroma. I'm feeling confident at this point. OK, home cooks, it's time to taste. What 
vegetables you have in here? Some pumpkin, carrots, celery, chickpeas, zucchini. Miranda, you really captured the essence of a tagine. That tells me that you have intuition. You understand flavors, you understand how to work with heat, you understand when something's too sweet, too sour, which is a very powerful tool to have as a professional chef. Incredible. Thank you so much. Miranda! Hi, Chef Al. I assume in Edmonton, you don't see a lot of these things, right? Yeah, don't see tagine, chef. Well, it smells great. You did a great job. Thank you. It's just cooked perfectly. It's not mushy, it's not soft. It's got a little bit of crunch and the flavor is sight. Couscous and the tagine. It's like a marriage. They complement each other. And you did that just right. Thank you, Chef Alvin. I'm amazing myself every single day I cook in this kitchen. These are so pretty. Look how cute they are. They're little babies. These are, look at these beautiful little potatoes, though, right? Yeah, and these mushrooms. They've got some wonderful root vegetables. They have forage mushrooms. They have some wonderful game meat like bison and venison. Look at this. Beautiful venison loin. Yeah, that's outstanding. Wow. There's an amazing selection of different proteins that we have to choose from. And we opt for the venison. These beautiful carrots, roasted. We'll sort of go for like a hunter's meal. You know? Oh yeah, totally elevated. a hunter's meal, yeah. Totally elevated yeah. hunter's meal. The story just makes sense already. Hunter's meal perfectly fits the setting that we're in. I think yeah, this is, like a we have the ribeye, so this is the ribeye, yeah. right? I can't be from Alberta and not choose the bison to work with today. Tay is from the West Coast, so we see that scallops are available to us, and we're like, what if we do a surf and turf? Alberta meets BC. Perfect, right? Do you want to go with figs? Figs and red wine. Yeah, figs, okay. red wine, good. You could hear a pin drop in this kitchen. You guys are in the zone. <laughs> You have a lot of vegetable work happening here, right? Yes, Chef. Some beautiful chanterelles, really nice rainbow carrots. We're doing some baby red potatoes roasted off in some duck fat. I'm going to be the veg guy, and Barry's going to take care of the meat and the sauce. Let me ask you something here. Are you going to cook the venison in individual portions or as a loin? As a loin. The cook on it's going to be perfect. I've cooked venison a couple of times before. Wow. Keep cooking. Absolutely, All Chef. Right. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. I can cook protein like nobody's business. I need to get the steak seared, I need to sear the scallops, roast the cauliflower, and that's a lot to do. So I'm hoping I can finish my demi-glades in 20 minutes. I'm just gonna add some herbs to it. How about we throw garlic in there? I don't think you should put raw garlic in there right now. I know what I want to put in it, but May disagrees with me. I think I can use some more raw wine to tell, like to be honest with you, some more red wine. I'll do it. I just, honestly, I think it needs some more like herbs and something like a little bit more flavorful than it just. I need to help her. I need to push her in the right direction. Yeah, just add a little bit of it. This? Yeah. I don't know. It's so hard to trust your gut when you have to talk to somebody else about it. Over in the red kitchen, Barry has no doubts about his wine sauce. I think I know more about wine than the average person. I truly believe I'm the right guy to be doing a red wine sauce. Now we're cooking. The wine sauce ties our entire dish together. Barry is nailing it. I wouldn't change a thing right now. The worst thing that could happen is uh, old man Barry has a stroke or something, and uh, I got to do the meat Thanks, man. and the veggies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on this bloody sauce. And I'm thinking, the sauce is not going to win. I'm going to win. Balsamic. Are you sure? A little bit, just a hint. What is that? We'll add a quarter teaspoon at a time. I think we can cut the bitter aftertaste with acid. Just constantly, just keep tasting, keep tasting. The sauce situation is stressing me out. One more quarter. If we don't nail this sauce, we're not going to win this challenge. Now let's see where we're at. Beautiful. It's gold. Absolute relief. I like it. I do too. I like it a lot. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. And yeah, that went by fast. We want to see beautiful plates, 12 of them. There's a lot of moving parts to the blue team and the red team's dish. And there's only two cooks on each team. It's going to be challenging. We're moving, we're moving. Our steaks are cooked nicely. All of our flavors taste really good. Our sauce worked out. I'm so glad we're not putting the scallop on the dish. No surf and turf for us. 
It is just turf. It's just gonna be turf now, but it's still gonna be delicious. Our dish is coming together exactly how we planned. Almost make like a half moon with the mushroom and the two potatoes, right? And then I'll follow in behind with the carrots. I'm really hoping that the families enjoy the meals that we put out for them. We really cooked with our hearts and our flavors are there. The fact that my family's tasting my food, it's crazy. I'm more nervous of our family trying the food than the judges. I have no regrets. This is the most pride that I've felt since I've been here. Very servers are coming. I've been together with my wife for 11 years and this is the best meal I've ever made her. Take them away. MasterChef Canada families, I think you'll be impressed with how much you've been able to motivate your home cooks today. From the red team, we have a hunter-style dinner. Venison with red wine plum sauce, baby potatoes cooked in duck fat, chanterelle mushrooms, and rainbow carrots. Sounds delicious, huh? And from the blue team, we have grilled ribeye of bison, with fig demi-glaze served alongside a truffled potato puree and roasted cauliflower. Let's eat! The families have no idea which dish was cooked by their loved ones, and their feedback will help the judges decide the winning team. The one thing that pops out for me on the red team is the vegetables. They are done with so much care, very elevated. The meat, on the other hand, has some challenges. There's two different thicknesses here. You have a thick piece, which is rare, and a thin piece, which is medium. That's not good. It's totally inconsistent. Look at the difference. Do you know, I don't want two layers of doneness on the same plate. I want them to be exactly the same. The sauce, rich, full of flavor, has the right balance, and goes incredibly well with the venison. Now let's move on to the blue team. There's no sea scallop on this plate. We were promised a surf and turf, and we just got turf. I have a feeling that they didn't put it on the plate because it wasn't good enough, and we have told them that from day one. If it's not great, do not put it on a plate. Beautiful potatoes, nice and smooth, it's not lumpy. It's got nice and... That's some money. Yeah. Velvety. The cauliflower is wonderful, it's nutty. It's perfectly roasted, okay? and that's not easy. How is the cook on your bison? Mine is rare, yours is rare. Mine is well done. I do not like my bison cooked this way. I think all things considered, when it comes to the cook on both the venison and that bison, they're pretty even. So how do you feel about the food, families? It's amazing when, when both plates were put in front of us. Uh, the presentation was just magnificent. I thought they were both very well done. Usually the meat is the focus, but it seems that the vegetables almost stole a show. The mashed potato truffles on the blue plates is wonderful. Overall, to me, the meat on the red team and that sauce was to die for. Root vegetable is one of the most common ingredients used in a lot of culture. It is comfort food to almost everyone in this world. Root vegetables, they're actually like really versatile and also very forgiving, which is like everything I like in a food or person, basically. Michael, what would you do? I'm thinking totally vegetarian and almost like a meal soy of these root vegetables. I tell you, sometimes see root vegetables can be very bland. So I would take meat and make a stew. So all that meat flavor will go into that root vegetable, making it more exciting. I would actually make a multi-layered soup using all root vegetables. Three very different options. <laughs> you know what, I'm really excited. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I am making a root vegetable soup. This is actually how I convinced my husband to let me do the cooking. He was known as the good cook, but this was the dish that sealed the deal. It has sweet potato, turnip, celery root, and some golden beets. When blended together, they create like a super root vegetable. Hey. 30 minutes! 30 minutes has gone by! Big ass bowl. Okay. <laughs> I'm making root vegetables five ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip and yellow beet puree. I'm coming from a farm with my four kids hanging off my legs to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. <laughs> it's crazy. 
Hi, Jenny. Hi. The fact that you have this garden at home, you must eat a lot of vegetables. That's pretty much all we eat at home. Do the kids ever turn up their nose and say, no more oh, vegetables? of course, of course. I hide those veggies in everything. I'm very excited to see what you're going to come I'm up with. I'm excited for you to try it. Come on, baby. Ah! I see all the beautiful colors, and I immediately think rainbow trout. I'm using a combination of different root vegetables, like radishes, beets, blue potato, and then a bit of leek to make a rainbow scale on top of the fish. The inspiration behind my dish is my dad. We would fish in the summertime for rainbow trout. And I remember my dad showing me how to get the bobber on the line. Fond memories. My dad died when I was 20. It was a mighty rip through the page of my life. And I wanted to do things that would be kind of safe. For a really long time, food felt like a risk. I now feel ready to do some risking. <laughs> this is turf and surf, a sweet potato puree, a beet puree, seasoned blanched vegetables. Underneath all of that, there is a rainbow trout poached in a flavored broth. This might be the first fish I've eaten where I like the scales. The fish is cooked perfectly. The root vegetables, they're definitely the star of the show. They really showcase those earthy, deep flavors. Overall, pretty amazing. Thanks. Hi there, Jennifer. Hello, Chef. It certainly is eye-catching. Beet is such a wonderful root vegetable to work with. What comes out is that earthy, slightly sweet flavor. And those root vegetables as part of the scales on top, maybe slightly under seasoned. Okay. But if I had to score this dish on a scale of one to 10, I'd be giving it eight and a half. So well done, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. It's a roasted root vegetable soup. And there's some sunchoke chips, a little bit of crispy pancetta for nuttiness and pine nuts. It's very, very pretty. I just love what you did with these sunchoke chips and these herbs because it, it looks really earthy. Let's give it a try. Wow. Oh. It is so good. <laughs> it's comforting. It's got good balance of flavors. I got the sweetness from the potatoes. Fantastic job. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chrissy, are you proud of the soup? I am very proud of the soup, yes. You've got the coriander seed. You've got a little bit of chili happening. Yeah. You've definitely showcased to me that you have a really great palate. Thank you. When you pureed the soup, did you add any dairy to it? Yes, I poured heavy cream in there. I would have added actually olive oil to it because that cream right now is masking oh. a lot of the big, bold flavors that you really want to achieve, yeah. right? Yeah. Other than that, it's amazing. Great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> I left my career as an airline customer service agent to come here and do MasterChef Canada, and it's completely worth it. This is Vegetables Five Ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip, apple, and yellow beet puree. The plating is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It really is a discovery of goodies. Great silky smooth puree. The sweet potato? Glazed maple sweet potato. I guess that gets the kids to eat them, right? Yeah. I put some hot spice on it, though. They don't like that at home. But the judge does. <laughs> That's great. How did you go about treating the lotus root? I just boiled down some beets, and then I pickled it just in the beet juice. It could have sat in that brine just a little bit longer, just to give a bit more of an acidic edge. I agree, yeah. But it's still crispy and flavorful. Well done. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Jenny, I like the way you separated the vegetables. I see the winters here. Celery ac, Swiss chard, sweet potatoes. On this side, you've got summer root vegetables, radish, beets. You know your vegetables. Sweet potatoes. Hmm. I like the balance, sweetness. Let me taste the pickles. Good crunch, got the acidity. Seeing a lot of techniques. Wonderful job. Thank you. Wow. 
I'm feeling really proud of myself. Like I belong here, maybe. I love you girls so much. I'm making smoked venison with braised kale, a roasted squash puree, and baby beets. I think the venison is actually one of the easiest proteins to tackle in this challenge. It's just the trimming of the silver skin on the tenderloin of the venison, and he's good to go. I could have just seared the venison. The reason why I want to smoke it, I want to bring a different element. I have to win this competition, so smoking it's going to separate me from the rest again. I'm making rabbit two ways, so I'm stuffing my rabbit with rabbit mousse that I'm going to make with the hind legs. And it's going to be served on top of a Jerusalem artichoke puree with an elderberry red wine sauce. I think the rabbit is actually, in my mind, the most difficult to do out of all the four proteins. It's a very delicate piece of meat. It's very challenging. Rabbit mousse is all about texture. You're looking for a silkiness. Every step has to be respected. This dish can go two ways. Either it could be mind-blowing or a total disaster. I'm doing a sauteed pickerel with a sweet potato puree, roasted harvest vegetables, and I'm gonna finish the whole thing off with a little uh, vinaigrette. This fish takes like not even five minutes to cook, so I'm gonna prep these amazing vegetables first. I am a peeling machine today. One good thing with fish, it's the fastest protein to cook. Yeah, but fastest protein to cook, slowest protein to butcher. I'm comfortable with squaw because it's actually one of the things that we could get for free that my dad would go hunting for. I'm just gonna do it like I would at home on a mushroom gravy ragu with glazed heirloom carrots. Hopefully the taste will win the judge's heart. Now Lynn got the squab. Again, that's one of my favorite proteins. Squab you can almost treat like venison, for example, because they have a very similar mm. lean texture to them, dense and rich in flavor. I like my medium rare. I hope she does it right. Is there any other way? I'm worried about my rabbit mousse cooking all the way through because that might mean that my loin dries up. I can't risk these rabbit loins drying out, so I'm gonna wrap them in bacon. Sabrina, what are you making here? I'm making rabbit two ways, so my rabbit is stuffed with a rabbit mousse. So one way isn't enough under all this pressure. I'm taking the risks I need to take to end up in the finale, Chef. Yeah, but someone's actually gonna go home today. It won't be me, Chef. I'm right on time. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. This one plate is everything. I'm either packing my bags or going to the top. David, would you uh, please describe your dish? Today we have a uh, venison loin with braised kale, a puree of squash, also a trio of the beautiful beets, and a red wine reduction. Did you get the smoke on the venison you were looking for? At times, there was a little bit too much smoke, but yes, I did get the smoke I was looking for. It looks stunning. Can't wait to try it. Thank you, David. Thank you. This dish looks amazing. It tastes amazing. But you know what? Everybody's is going to be amazing today. We're all fighting for the same thing. So I think the plating is really quite attractive. Elevated it. It's got a certain level of sophistication. But it's, it's a little unusual and has a free spirit to it also. Looks like you did a great job here on the cook of the venison. It's perfectly seared. You have this wonderful medium rare in the middle. I mean, what a fantastic job. If I was to make one small complaint, the balsamic glaze is too thick. If this was just a slight bit thinner, and I can get all the beetroot and all this coming together, it would be just perfect. David's venison was very good. It melted in my mouth. Next up is Lynn. I hope the judges recognize in my dish that I've worked very hard with my plating and that my flavors are there. For you today, I've made a butter pan seared squab breast, and it's served alongside Riesling, maple, and apricot glazed carrots on a mushroom ragu. It looks fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And the squab looks like it's perfectly caramelized on top. Stunning. I think the presentation here is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it looks great, but I'm curious, how is it cooked? Squab is one of the trickiest proteins to cook just right. Now I want to see medium rare. Well, look at that. It's incredible. Beautiful. I love the white gravy. I love the sweetness of the squab, the gaminess. It lets all the ingredients speak out louder. For me, I would have liked to have seen a little bit larger cut on the mushrooms. If they were bigger, be able to identify the mushrooms that she was using. Overall, it's a wonderful dish. I thought that Lynn's squab was delicious. It's seasoned well. It has a great sear on it. I would definitely order this dish in a restaurant. Next to present their plate is Sabrina. As I'm putting down my plate, I'm finally satisfied. This dish should earn me a spot in the finale. 
Here you have ratatouilles on top of a Jerusalem artichoke puree, charred green onions, peppercorn toasted pine nuts with a elderberry and red wine sauce. It looks delicious. Thank you. Let's try it. Sabrina has obviously displayed great technique. She has uh, used the loin, stuffed it, wrapped it in bacon, and then pan-roasted it. It's a very tricky technique to achieve, especially in a 90-minute cook. That rabbit is absolutely delicious. Seasoned very nicely. There's one misstep on this rabbit. It had one minute too long in the pan. It's a little bit dry. Other than that, it's a knockout dish. Sabrina's rabbit dish was excellent. It's the first time I've had rabbit, and I would definitely have it again. And last to serve the judges is Cody. So Cody, could you tell us about your uh, pickerel dish, please? Absolutely. So what you have in front of you is a pickerel, very simply seasoned with salt, served over a sweet potato puree. You also have maple glazed carrots there, candy cane and yellow beets, a little bit of rainbow shard, finished off with a little Meyer lemon vinaigrette just to freshen everything up. It looks very inviting. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Chef. This is the best dish that I've made so far in this competition. If I go out on this, I'm proud of what I've put forward. Well, I think the presentation looks absolutely terrific. Let's see how Cody did. Wow, look at the cook on this fish. It is like a sheet of glass. I mean, I don't think you can get a better cook on a piece of fish. You're right, Claudio, he has cooked that fish beautifully. It is such a delicate fish that takes a very gentle hand to cook it. I find that it's just a little on the under-seasoned side. I don't think he added any salt to this. It doesn't seem like it's seasoned at all. I would say that my piece of fish is fairly well seasoned. Well, yours is, but mine isn't, and mine is under season for sure. I do like the sweet potato. I like what he's done to it. So there's some really strong elements in this dish. Out of all the home cooks that have been through this competition, Cody is probably the most improved. Just a hit of salt would have elevated everything on this plate. An authentic Russian salmon kulibiak. What in the hell is a salmon kubliak? It's encased in a perfectly executed shell of puff pastry. But there's so much more going on inside. Six distinct layers of delectable flavor. Ooh, this is extremely elevated. It's something like I've never seen before. Perfectly cooked rice and onions. Mouth-watering mushroom duxelle. A layer of egg whites. A tender and flaky fillet of salmon, egg yolks, parsley, and dill. Salmon, kuming, yak, whatever, with seven layers of things is, that's insane. Michael G's wasting no time. First thought is, get the puff pastry going, because it's got to get in the fridge, it's got to get rested. They're making a version of rough puff pastry in a food processor. A rough puff is much quicker. Doesn't quite puff up as much, but it's still a great pastry to use for a dish like this. Working in the fire hall, I'm under pressure all the time, so I gotta do this. I'm thinking about my family back home. Everything I've sacrificed to, to come here. I'm not going home today. I want this so badly, and I'm gonna show everyone that. Michael G's already got his roll out. He's shaping it. That is fast. Man. Good work, Jen. That's it, Jen. That's it. Thanks, guys. You're doing amazing. Keep going. You want every single layer to be uniform. My tip would be make sure you chop everything ultra, ultra fine. Because the smaller, the finer it is, the easiest to form the layer. And I can see right now, Michael G, see the way he's chopping the mushrooms? Wow. Woo! Take notes, I'm coming for you next. It's double-handed. Speed, baby, speed. I have everything to prove. I chose to do this, so I, I can't come out in the bottom, because otherwise I look like a fool. It's hard work, baby. I see Eugene, he is taking much more time chopping up his mushrooms for a nice, even, consistent, fine dice. Those look nice, Eugene. Thank you. It's all about precision. That's awesome. Keep it going.
Michael G, I think you're the fastest home cook I've ever seen in five seasons. <laughs> Thank you. Michael, if you go home today, you have no one else to blame but yourself. Do you think you're putting too much on the line right now? Definitely not. I think either way, they were probably going to keep me down here. I think they think that I'm a bit of a threat. True that. Speed is a good thing, but remember, this is precision quality, right? I agree. Thank you, chef. Ready, man! It's got to be one of the fanciest things that I've cooked. Every single layer is distinct, and all the flavors marry together to make this dish what it is. There's a lot of precision involved in this. The length of cook on the overall dish can change if you have too thick a layer of the various garnishes or too thin a layer. I'm feeling good. I got this. It's already ready to go. I need to get this in the oven pretty well right now. Michael B is in a lot of trouble. First of all, okay, he's the latest to roll his pastry. That is going to go in the oven really late, and it's not going to cook. One of the key steps is giving that pastry crust a really good egg wash with a touch of cream beaten into it, so it has a wonderful, nice, rich, shiny crust. 20 minutes! Woo! Come on, guys, 20 minutes left. Say your prayers, everyone. Your salmon should be in the oven by now. Look at Michael V's hands. They are really shaking. The clock is getting to me a little bit. He's running out of time right now. I'm working slower than I should be right now. Come on! I got to get in that oven. And it has to go in right now. This is insane. Come on, baby. 10 minutes left! It's important to keep an eye on your Kulabiak in the oven in order to ensure a good, golden, even cook. It is anyone's game right now. One minute! Amazing! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and up! Hey, Jan. How does it look for you? I think it looks beautiful. I'm very proud of it. To me, it looked kind of great. <laughs> <laughs> because I can tell you, of all the ones I've seen, this one is got to be the closest. Thank you. <laughs> so when they cut into this, what am I going to see? Perfection. Perfection. I see those layers. <laughs> Very nice. What was in my mind? I think you love it. You no doubt? Oh, yeah. That's why right, I have no doubt. <laughs> this tastes fantastic. Thank you. OK? So everything combined together, you got all the distinctive flavor. This is something that your husband would love to taste, right? Absolutely. So you want him to taste it? Oh, he will be. When do you want him to taste it? When I win this. I like that. Thank you. We're making a pemmican-inspired corn and bison. Pemmican was an indigenous way of preserving food that you could take with you if you had to go out hunting for a very long time. It would be traditionally meat, dried berries, like nuts, often corn. So we're just really celebrating all the ingredients that would have originally gone into something like that. Andre's gonna work on some bison later, and I'm working on the corn. Chef Joel has given us mandamin. It's a white corn, and I think tying it in with like the pemmican idea is really special. So I'm working on our dessert right away. So right out the gates, I start making a squash cake before I can start with the bison, because I know that will take a while. It's all about time management. I need to get this cake done like yesterday. You got this, bud. I'm working on our corn chowder right now, so I'm getting as much corn as I can off of here. I am working on a corn fritter that's going to go with our soup. I'm using corn flour, corn meal. It's going to be uh, amazing. In the last challenge, I almost went home. The end is so close. You know, we're down to four cooks now. It's definitely going to be a, a tough game from here on out. 14 minutes. 
I'm just gonna take off enough for the first couple steaks. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just kind of trying to set things up for Andre because I know he's working really hard on getting that cake done. How do you time this thing? I get the cake in the oven and start working on that meat. I have to make sure those steaks are perfectly cooked. And then I have to make a great pan sauce. Oh, beautiful. I've come a long way. Before this, I was working in the hospital, doing my regular routine, and now I'm top four in MasterChef Canada. Being here is making me realize that cooking is where I should be. All right, how are we doing? I'm good. I'm chopping the squash for dessert. Just going to get a head start on it. Christy, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Chef? What are you making? We're going to do a corn chowder, and we're going to have little corn fritters that go with it with a little bit of a maple drizzle. So how are you going to incorporate this beautiful white corn to your corn chowder? It's going to be the main, like, chunky components of the corn in the soup. Have you uh, ever had this corn before? I have not. It has that little note of smoke in it, which is really fascinating. Yeah, it almost tastes like a tortilla. So let me ask you, what is the dynamic like between yourself and Josh? We're just sharing ideas back and forth. We're checking in with each other. I think we both feel really good about what we're doing. You've got a lot to do. I'll leave you to it. Good okay. luck. Thank you, Chef. I'll be the first to admit, I used to underestimate Josh. Give us a taste. Okay. Oh, okay. He does the meat and potatoes, whatever. You get a hint of that smoke. You get a lot of corn. But he knows food. He's passionate. And he can cook. That tastes really good. Wow, it smells delicious. Okay, describe your first course. What are you doing? We're doing um, a pemmican-inspired uh, bison and corn. Nice. Have you ever cooked bison before? Never, chef. Okay, feel that. What's that telling you right now? Feel that. Yeah. Feel that. That's well done. What's that? That's rare. That's rare. Okay. So I got to be in the middle. Pay attention to your food. Okay. Even cut a little piece. Look inside of it. Take a peek and see what's happening. Thank you, chef. Okay. Good luck. How is it? Oh yeah, a little longer. A little longer. Yeah. yeah. There's five minutes left. I got to put it back in the pan and start basting some more. Cutting it really close. Okay. Beautiful, Josh. Beautiful, beautiful. So far in this competition, Chrissy and I definitely aren't known as the top platers, but we can cook. There's so much on the line here. It has to be perfect. I think we're gold. Tastes good. OK, I'm going to strain it off, and I'm going to yep. pour it in. Awesome. This is such a huge privilege to cook for luminaries of Indigenous cuisine. I just really hope they like it. Amazing job, Andre. Awesome job. All right, Kay. round one. So what do you have in front of you from the blue team is a corn chowder with smoked cheddar and corn fritter. And from the red team, a pemmican-inspired bison with corn. So please enjoy. I am very, very impressed. These dishes look like they came from a professional kitchen. The red team, the pemmican inspired corn. I'm a huge fan of Iroquois white corn and it's front and center. It was incredible. I agree on the red team. They've really done a good job with the white corn. You really do get the smokiness. Whereas I feel with the blue team's dish, the white corn is featured, but you don't quite get that from this particular dish. The soup on the blue team, the flavor profile and the seasoning is a bit weak. I think it needs to be amped up in the actual flavor of corn, something to just give it another layer. I think the uh, red team, lots of flavors coming from the bison, but I would have preferred probably a little bit more rare. Chef Wolfman, could you tell us your thoughts on the blue team's corn chowder? The corn chowder reminds me of the soup that my mom would make. A, a very simple, but it tastes like home. Now, the corn fritter here, you can see that the outside's a little bit dark and the inside looks a bit chalky, but the flavor and the seasoning is very precise. It really hits all those notes. Who doesn't love a good hot chowder and a corn fritter? Gorgeous. Go, go, go. Back in the kitchen, the home cooks are tackling their second course, this time featuring beans. I'm thinking like nice long strips like this. Will do. So for the second course, we're going to have a wild mushroom dusted venison medallion on a warm bean salad with a wild berry balsamic reduction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. We've got runner beans, we've got green beans, yellow wax beans. Let's use them all. I want these beans to be beautiful and mouth-watering. OK, just a couple more of these guys, and then we should be good. All right, so I'm going to grab the partridge. OK, awesome. I'm going to move on to the beans. For our second course, we're doing partridge in a nest of sour cherries and beans. We're hoping this plate tells a story of a partridge, you know, in its little nest. I like having stems on my beans. How do you feel about it? I like them too. Keep it rustic, yeah. Okay, cool. I like them all. 
The bean is the main star, but the partridge is going to accompany it. I got to get these birds in ASAP. I got to move fast with these partridges because I got to get them roasted. So I do not have time to cut this bird up into little pieces. So I'm just basically chopping it straight down into halves. Ooh, that's a nice sound. This is my first time cooking venison tenderloin. But, uh, you know, being from the prairies, who doesn't like cooking meat? So I'm just going to sear them at really high heat just to get a nice crust on them, take them off, and then rub it in a dried mushroom dust. And then I'm going to finish it off in the oven. OK, <laughs> let's see what's happening. Hello, chef. I am preparing um, our warm bean salad that's going to go with our venison. OK. How are you going to make these beans sing? I'm going to use some maple syrup. We're going to okay. use some vinegar. Well, uh, that's very Canadian. I yeah. love maple syrup. Right. Now, Josh, you only got 13 minutes left. What cook do you want on this? Uh, medium rare. You need the time to cook the venison. Yeah. And also, you need time to what? Rest it, chef. That's right. Yep. 13 minutes left. Thank you, chef. I appreciate it. But it's definitely going to come down to the wire. Okay. I'm going to literally uh, treat these beans as though they're like a steak and like butter base them. Oh, yeah, yeah. perfect. The treatment we're giving to the beans is to butter base them to really kind of bring out their more like earthy elements. No, I, I like them whole, man. Yeah, no, I like them too. I love the great outdoors. One of my fondest early food memories is fishing with my dad. He passed away when I was 20. Being here and using all these really special ingredients and just seeing how far I've come, he would have loved this. Oh, do they look good? We got this. I've never cooked a partridge before. Oh, I definitely do not want to let my team down. Okay. Thanks very much, you guys. Woo! So the second course from the red team is roasted partridge with sour cherry gastrique and a bean nest. From the blue team, we have venison medallions, three bean salad, and pickled cinnamon cap mushrooms. Let's dig in, shall we? I think on the red team, just feels a little bit more sort of rustic and homey and simple. Counter to that, the blue team, I think there's some elegance to the plating. I like the balance of this dish. You have the beans, still has this crunch. The berries provide the acidity, so one working with the other. Now, the venison, it's slightly overcooked, but still, for me, it's not bad. On the red team, the partridge is delicious, lots of great flavor. The beans, however, can see that they weren't uh, cleaned properly, which is a problem. For the red team, when I think of indigenous hospitality, indigenous food, it, I think very approachable. This is how we would eat it, right here. But the beans could use a little bit of work. For the beans to be a featured ingredient, I think blue team really did a great job. I had to like cut off the ends of my beans to eat them off of the red team. Thank you for the feedback. Last push, last round. It's all sweet stuff. We got this. So with this third course, we have a squash cake with a tempered chocolate bark on the side. And we're going to finish it off with some juniper pastry cream. Wait, I already have the cake done, dude. Yep. We start big. Andre has the cake already done. I'm going to get started on the juniper pastry cream. Like, Andre's going to start making some chocolate bark. So I'm using a brush so I can get the bark lines onto the chocolate. We're still sticking with the outdoors theme, and I want this chocolate to look like tree bark. This is the third and final course. Everything has to be perfect. We gotta get this cool down quick. Oh, it's so pretty. Baking powder, baking powder. Where's the baking powder? The idea for this third course is to really celebrate the squash. So we're gonna do like, kind of like a play on a bread pudding using bannock. There's nothing better than a hot piece of bannock. Bannock is a quick bread that's very simple to make. You know, it's pretty much flour, baking powder, and water. Ready for this? See how this goes. Bannock is perfectly done when it's nice and golden brown on the outside. Oh, that looks gorgeous, Josh. I'm responsible for squash, squash, and more squash. So squash puree, caramelized butternut squash. Also, a whipped cream with some birch syrup, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Yes, that's perfect. I want to eat this. <laughs> I really want to eat this dessert. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, this cake is nice. I'm gonna follow you with the pastry cream, okay? Perfect. I'm mega proud of us. We had such a joy of a time cooking together, and I think that really showed in our food and on the plates. I'm gonna follow you this way, okay? I'd be extremely devastated if we'd lose this one. Okay, so just over top. Like that? Perfect. Okay. 
These are so nice, Josh. Oh my God. I feel like this challenge has been perfect to show that I can be delicate and, and plate well. And also that, hey, I deserve to be here and I'm a force to be reckoned with too. You thought these big hands would be using flowers, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Yes. Good job, guys. Good luck tomorrow on the pressure test, red team. Uh -huh. <laughs> Boom, mic drop. I'm out. So let's get on to the third course. From the red team, we have a birch and squash cake with tempered chocolate bark, candied squash, and juniper pastry cream. And from the blue team, a deconstructed bannock bread pudding with a squash mousse and candied squash. Well, let's dig in. What I first of all notice is the plating styles have flipped. The red team has gone with a more sophisticated plating, whereas I felt their bean course was much more rustic. On the blue team, plating is much more sort of homey and simple. Visually, these are probably my favorite plates. The blue team's plate, the squash in a puree, you can taste it. Candy squash, also a nice touch. I love the texture from the bannock. I just love the complexity. The red team, at first I thought, gee, the cake might look a little on the dry side, but oh no, it was beautiful and moist. The flavors of this slightly bitterness from the chocolate was just absolutely wonderful. I agree. I like the chocolate with the squash, something I never really thought would go. I'm really liking this. Chef Mandy, what are your comments on the third course? I don't know which one I like better. They did a good job on both of them. You know, you're all our guests today, and I'm very proud. I think that they have really risen to a new level in the kitchen tonight, and you can see it with these two desserts, both extraordinary. I'm not mad at Veronica for giving me the fresh pumpkin, because I'm, I'm screwed either way. I don't know my way around pumpkin other than Halloween, so I'm pretty nervous. It's a really difficult fruit to work with. I think it's a fruit, vegetable. What is it? Claudio, what would you do? I would do an incredible soup with lots of cinnamon, cloves, ginger, maybe a little bit of coconut milk. But I would do some pasta, maybe a pumpkin gnocchi, flavored with a little bit of Sichuan pepper. Sounds wonderful. Making a pumpkin squash soup, I have some apple, I have some apricot flavoring. I don't know if the flavors are gonna work. I've never cooked in an elimination challenge. I've been pretty lucky with that. I have no idea if this dish is gonna be enough to keep me here. I'm fighting for my life. Wow, there's a lot of activity happening here, Mary. What are you making? I'm making a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue bechamel. I'm not putting potato in there because I want to keep the pumpkin flavor up front. Sounds actually quite ambitious. We'll see. <laughs> you think Veronica gave you uh, a gift? I do think she gave me a gift. OK. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. <sighs> I know pumpkin is very fibrous, so I'm blending that puree like mad. I want to bring out the flavors of pumpkin because that's got to be the star of the show. I look down at my dish and I'm a little worried that it's not very gourmet. It's a pumpkin puree soup flavored with apple, ginger, sage, and uh, pumpkin crostini. Very interesting. All right, let's taste. Wow, I like it. You had the right amount of pumpkin, right amount of stock, and the apple complements it beautifully. You honor the pumpkin, and I like that. Thank you very much, Chef Alan. It's full, it's luxurious, and very fresh tasting. Just looking at the soup, how beautiful and bright that is, how Smooth, that is. Beautiful, beautiful soup. From its color to its taste to its texture. Thank you so much, Chef. This is a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue cheese bechamel and crispy sage. All right, so let me try it. You have the liver. You know, you have the sweetness from the pumpkin in the gnocchi. You have the saltiness coming from the crispy panchanta. And the blue cheese, just that oomph. Nothing's overpowering each other. You know, I love 
these little orange gnocchis because when I see them, it reminds me of pumpkin. I'm gonna say, you deliver what we wanted. Thank you, Chef. Definitely what I wanted. <laughs> Thank you.